Hello. Let's see. What was I going to talk about? Oh, it's going to be forgetting and memory failure. Now, uh, people often talk about the term forgetting. And uh, that is, for a while in memory research, uh, scientists kind of shied away from that term and uh, preferred instead of talking about memory failure. And there is a difference, okay? And they, even now, I, I think for me, I, I way prefer memory failure over forgetting. Um, because if something is forgotten, it means that it's lost from long-term memory, from inactive memory, it's lost in your head, from your head. <laughs> and if it's lost, you're never gonna get it back. And how can you prove that something is lost? That turns out not to be easy. Anyway, uh, to get into these issues, let's look at the first slide, which uh, illustrates uh, uh, the three basic stages of information processing. So if you're going to remember something, first you have to get learn it. That's the acquisition stage, okay? You have to learn the information. And then it has to be retained over a period of time. That's the reten re retention in, uh, phase. And then you have to retrieve the information when you're tested for it, and that's the retrieval phase. Now, uh, forgetting means that uh, the information is... Uh, was never encoded properly to be retained or it was lost out of your long-term memory store. Uh, memory failure, in contrast, can occur for a variety of reasons. And <laughs> I'm uh, always struck when, uh, after the first test in a semester, students sometimes don't do very well on a test. And some of them come to talk to me and they say, oh, what, what happened? I, I knew the information and I didn't do very well on the test. I studied so hard and even so, I didn't do well on the test. How come? And so I start to talk to them about how they studied, how much time they spent studying, how often they read the chapter, if they did the exercises, et cetera, et cetera. And it quickly becomes apparent that the memory failure in their case was not a failure to retain information, but a failure to learn it in the first place. <laughs> so one way that you can have memory failure is to have a problem in the acquisition phase. You don't learn it in the first place. Of course, you can have problems in the retention phase. And some of the problems that occur in the retention are if you have a disease, brain disease, if you have a concussion or for some reason brain injury, uh, you may have memory loss. And uh, so there could be memory failure due to problems in, with retention. And most, probably 99% of the cases of memory failure are problems with retrieval. The information is in your head somewhere. You just can't retrieve it. And the absence of retrieval is usually uh, due to lack of proper retrieval cues. So uh, to illustrate these issues, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the effects on memory of having a brain concussion. Now, a concussion results in what's called retrograde amnesia. And the next slide illustrates the phenomenon of retrograde amnesia. So E1 through E7, uh, those are symbols representing events, event one, two, three, four, five, six. a sequence of events. Uh, and we all experience sequence of events, you know, during the course of our lives. The arrow indicates the point where you get a concussion. You involve, riding a motorcycle, you get hit by a car, your head bounces on the pavement and you have a severe concussion. And you can't remember some things. 
what it is that you that you cannot remember well you cannot remember the things that occurred just before the concussion so if you ask a motorcycle driver uh if he's fortunate enough to survive uh, uh he's, he's wearing a helmet protective clothing so his head gets uh uh, you know, bounce on pavement, he gets a concussion, but otherwise he's, he's okay. You ask him what happened just before the accident, how did the accident occur? And he won't be able to give you any details. Uh, but uh, if you ask him about things that occurred earlier on, the further back in time those events occurred, what did you do yesterday or last week? Or where do you usually go shopping? He can answer those questions correctly. So there's a graded amnesia whereby the greatest memory loss occurs for events right close to the concussion and less so for events earlier on. And uh, typically the way that this is interpreted is that uh, uh, the concussion disrupts the consolidation of memories and that's why you can't remember those things. But whenever there's an argument about lack of consolidation or any kind of argument about memory failure, you always have to ask yourself, well, might it be a problem with retrieval, not so much a problem of consolidation? And so uh, let's look at the next experiment, which was done with rats. We don't uh, like to, <laughs> we don't do research, uh, experimental work on human subjects by giving them concussions. Uh, we study memory, retrograde amnesia in people who've undergone like football players and so on and then have concussions but in, ex in this experiment there was a um, simple uh, avoidance training task the rat was in a two compartment box uh, rats generally like and they were put in a white compartment and rats like dark places so they tend they uh, tend to enter the black compartment. As soon as they stepped in the black compartment, they got one brief shock. And that's the conditioning trial. So then the question is, uh, do they remember that the black compartment is dangerous? And you can uh, uh, test for that by uh, returning them to this two compartment box, put them in the white compartment and see how long it takes for them to step into the black chamber. And what you see is a long latency to step into the black chamber. So in this particular experiment, everybody got the same training trial, and then some of the rats got a concussion right afterwards. Some got a concussion uh, an hour later, four hours later, six hours later, and so on. And the next slide shows the results of the experiment. And these are beautiful retrograde amnesia data. What we're looking at is the latency to enter this black compartment as a function of how soon after training uh, the rats suffered a concussion. If they suffered a concussion one minute later, they don't remember that the black is dangerous and they enter the black compartment right away. If they suffered a concussion six hours later, they still don't remember. They suffered the concussion a day later, they're still showing pretty poor memory of the uh, uh, conditioning trial. The concussion occurs three days after training now they're starting to show this uh, um, really hesitation to enter the black box. If the concussion occurs five days after training, they're very fearful of the black compartment. So classic retrograde amnesia data. And now the question is, uh, are these results due to uh, a, uh, a failure to consolidate the memory, the failure to or, or due to forgetting, due to genuine forgetting. You know, you cause this brain injury and it's going to mess up the brain and it's going to cause you to forget stuff. Uh, is it due to genuine forgetting or is it a retrieval problem? Now, most people, if you ask them to decide, they're going to say, what do you mean? This is a no-brainer. <laughs> excuse the pun, uh, this, these animals suffered a concussion. Of course, they couldn't consolidate their memory. This is a beautiful example of forgetting. 
And amnesia uh, it tends to be used uh, in synonymously with forgetting. Now, the reason I'm showing you these data is these are data were collected by David Riccio, who is you know, a really bright guy. And he has done a, lots of experiments of this sort demonstrating that many aspects of retrograde amnesia is not really amnesia. It's a problem of retrieval. It's, a pro it's not that the memory is gone, it's that you can't get it back. <laughs> so uh, how do you get it back? Well, uh, in the next experiment that Riccio conducted, uh, he just took these same rats, a couple of days after training, you know, the rats got, got their concussion right after training. So ordinarily it would cause the maximal amnesia. And a couple of days later, put them in a different box and gave them brief shock. She just reminded them, hey, shock, there's shock in the world. Now the shock wasn't in a black compartment. It was in a totally different place, unrelated to the original training task. But it was intended as a reminder cue. And what was the impact impact of this reminder? Well, the next slide shows you the results. Uh, uh, the two bars on the left are pseudo training. That's kind of a control condition. Uh, uh, the next, the middle bars uh, show you the data for animals that receive a concussion. On the training day, before they ever got shocked in the black compartment, they entered the compartment really fast. And on the test day after the concussion, they also entered the compartment really fast. Uh, the uh, two set of bars on the right side of the uh, graph show the guys who got this extra independent, unrelated shock in a different place before the test. And uh, what's their performance? They're showing tremendous hesitation to in in enter the black compartment. So what looked to be forgetting and amnesia or forgetting caused by a concussion uh, is not really forgetting. It's a problem with retrieval. And you're going to have, uh, uh, you're going to have lack memory for uh, circumstances of an accident. For example, I, I was in an accident uh, a couple of years ago. I was at T-bone kind of, uh, 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 collision. I was making a left turn. His car came rapidly uh, 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 and hit me. Fortunately, they hit the uh, passenger side. Uh, I spun the car around. Of course, uh, they, I stopped. The uh, uh, other car stopped. Uh, I, the, I was all disoriented by that. The uh, passenger side door got all crinkled up. And uh, I was pretty disoriented and got out, sat down on a curb, <laughs> and a policeman uh, came over to me after some uh, uh, people called the cops. And, and he came over to me and asked me what happened. <laughs> and if I did a sense of humor, I would have said, hey, I'm a psychology professor. You shouldn't be asking me that because I just... I was involved in an accident, probably had a slight concussion, and therefore I'm experiencing retrograde amnesia. And therefore I can't tell you. And in fact, I couldn't tell him details about the accident. I could tell him what my name was and those sorts of things, where I lived, uh, who to call to get me a ride, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, I couldn't tell him what happened. In the, why couldn't I tell him that? Well, it's a retrieval problem. Uh, we remember things uh, uh, in relation to the stimuli that are present at the time that we uh, acquire that information. So the details of the accident are acquired in the connection with the experience of the accident, the crash, the spinning around, the seatbelt against your body and all of that sort of thing. And uh, so those become cues that are associated with the details of the accident. So uh, the best way to remember to the accident is to recreate those incidental cues uh, to serve as reminders about the nature of the accident. Of course, we, we don't do that sort of thing, and so the information becomes inaccessible. So <clears throat> just keep in mind that even in cases of retrograde amnesia, 
where it really looks like forgetting, it may not be, it may be a retrieval problem. And uh, you have to find the, uh, just the right retrieval cues in order to reactivate that memory. Hope you'll, go, you'll remember this. <laughs> and if you don't, uh, play one of the other tapes <laughs> and uh, see my bald head. <laughs> Incidental cues that may help to uh, reactivate these memories. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.